We are going to take you live now to East York Alternative Secondary School. That is where police are updating the media on a lockdown at that school this afternoon. Let's listen in. My badge number is 8162. I'm the uh, acting inspector here for the Toronto Police Service. Uh, thank you for attending here today. I'm here to uh, update uh, the media and the public about an incident that we had at East, East York Alternative School this afternoon. So at approximately 1.11 p.m. this afternoon, uh, the police received a call to attend the school for a fight that was occurring in the washroom. Uh, when the officers arrived on scene, uh, we did locate evidence of gunfire in the uh, bathroom. Um, we have since determined that one round was uh, uh, fired into the ground uh, and ricocheted off of the wall and ended up uh, landing inside a uh, outreach worker's shoe. Uh, the outreach worker suffered very minor injuries, was taken to a local hospital for precaution. Um, and our forensics uh, team here is on scene processing the, uh, the location. Um, we have since learned that there were six uh, persons of interest involved in this incident. They fled when the police were uh, called and they went eastbound on Cosburn Avenue. Uh, we are looking into the identity of these six people as we speak. We believe we know who was involved. We're just trying to piece together what their uh, respective roles were involved in this incident. Um, we have not recovered a, a weapon involved in this incident. If there were anybody uh, was in the area at about 1.11 p.m. on today's date at uh, Cosburn uh, and Coxwell, we encourage you to contact police at 416-808-5500. Um, this school violence, gun violence, continues to be a very pressing matter for the Toronto Police Service. Uh, we take this very seriously and uh, we are working very hard to uh, resolve these issues within the school system. Uh, we do believe that there, um, some of the people were, were uh, uh, school uh, students here, but we're just trying to piece together um, if they all were or if just were some of them. And did they leave in a vehicle? Or On foot, vehicle? yep. Um, the, the, sorry, it was a woman, a staff member? Uh, I, I don't have that information. So did, uh, someone, did someone go into the bathroom and try and break up the Yes, okay. so what happened was there was a skirmish that was uh, heard occurring inside the bathroom. This outreach worker went in to uh, stop this and uh, and that's that's when the incident unfolded. And you're not saying it's a man or a woman? Yeah. And the one round, what does one round mean? So it was one, uh, one discharged bullet from a firearm. Went into the outreach worker? It was fired into the ground area and ricocheted off the wall, and the, the projectile ended up inside the uh, worker's shoe. And but it, did it cut the foot? Uh, very, very minor injuries, um, so bruising. You know, how lucky is this outreach worker? How lucky are the people involved in this situation? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's extremely, uh, we're very fortunate that nobody was seriously injured in this incident. But having said that, every time something like this happens, it's it's uh, very concerning for the police. It's very concerning for the Toronto District School Board, for all school boards, and for the students alike. Uh, just because somebody um, was miraculously uh, uh, saved from further injury on this doesn't mean it's uh, any less concerning for us. We're very concerned about this incident, and we're going to work very, very hard to uh, resolve this as quickly as possible. Any sense what the fight was about? I, I don't have that information. I'm sorry. The school was placed into lockdown? The school was placed in lockdown at the time of this incident. We have since lifted that lockdown. The students have been released. Uh, we will be on scene processing the scene a little bit longer. Our investigative teams are here, as well as our forensic teams. And so uh, we are working to resolve this as quickly as possible. When did the fight occur and when did the school go into lockdown? So uh, we got the phone call or the call to police at approximately 1.11 p.m. At the uh, time that uh, the police responded, we, we weren't sure that a firearm had been discharged. And so we did not go into lockdown immediately. And I, I don't have the information uh, for you as to when it went into lockdown, uh, but it did subsequently when we found out what we were dealing with and it has been lifted, as I said. Um, we've got a representative of the Toronto District School Board uh, here with me as well, if you guys have any questions for either of us. Just the timing of 
when the fight began and when police were called and when the school went into lockdown? I'd have to get that specific information for you. As you can imagine, if there is a fight reported while concerning, it may not necessarily prompt a full lockdown. But then, uh, as the duty inspector was, uh, yeah, as the duty inspector was mentioning, uh, when it became aware, uh, when they became aware that yes, a firearm may have been involved, that's when that lockdown was put into place. I'd have to confirm the exact timing for you. Obviously, we are very happy that uh, everyone is okay after this incident this afternoon. Uh, we're going to make sure that we are supporting our students and staff here, whether it be through our professional support uh, services staff, making sure that uh, tomorrow they're on site uh, for anyone that wants to talk about this. Obviously, uh, it, this, is, this is very difficult when this happens right near you or in your school, so we want to make sure that we're supporting them in any way we can. Can you talk about this school, how many students, um, the, the grades, how old? So it is a secondary school, so grade nine and above. Roughly 100. This is an alternative school, so roughly 130 students attend this school today. I believe there was a reduced amount. I think uh, just around 60 today were uh, present at the school. And um, you know, we're, we're learning that the police believe some of the students involved are students. Some may not be. Um, how concerning is it that there are potentially not students in the washroom having a fight with? Well, and, and that's what we don't yet know yet. So I, it's premature right now to confirm that every single one of them was a student. It's indeed possible. All we're saying right now is that we're working to confirm everyone that was in that in that bathroom at the time of the uh, the altercation. Do you have a sense of what type of firearm this may have been, um, given the, the you were able to recover one round? Correct. Yeah, we're we're still trying to piece uh, that uh, together. Um, at this point, the uh, the projectile is not in. Uh, Full tact. It's not in full shape, so uh, I, I don't have an answer for you at that. Um, uh, but we will. We will know at some point. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, a disturbing update from Toronto Police at East York Alternative Secondary School after that school was placed on lockdown. At around 1 p.m., we're learning, police received a call about a fight. When officers arrived, they found evidence of gunfire. In a school bathroom, one shot was fired. That bullet, we're learning, landed on an outreach worker's foot. That worker has minor injuries, so it looks like they're going to be okay. Police say they're looking for six persons of interest right now who they say fled on foot. And investigators are trying to determine if all six suspects are students at this school. Uh, these are live images coming in from that scene. Toronto Police continuing their investigation. We're going to bring in our crime analyst, Steve Ryan, who's been listening to this shocking press conference. Steve, your initial thoughts? Well, it certainly is concerning. And sadly, the uh, Toronto District School Board are getting very good at putting those protocols in the place, as are the police, because they are getting a lot more um, practice, if you will, with regards to what's going on. What sounds like what's happened here, and this is just based on my opinion, mm -hmm. analyzing what was said, it sounds to me like there was some sort of altercation in the bathroom, of course, and perhaps a gun went off accidentally, and this is why the bullet ricocheted off the ground, off the bathroom floor, and struck that man or grazed his foot. That's what appears to have happened. So a gun was produced. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it may have gone off accidentally. Otherwise, you're not going to have a bullet hit the ground unless you're pointing it down towards the ground. It's got to go somewhere else beforehand. If it's going to skip, it's going to skip and go up as opposed to skip and hit into somebody's foot. So that's what it sounds like. Right. And, and we're talking about young people involved in, in types of crimes like this. We heard police say uh, some of these suspects are confirmed to be uh, students at that school. They're trying to figure out if all six are. What do you make of that, Steve? Well, it goes to show you that um, the students in the school are concerned about what's going on like their safety is always at risk or it's always a concern for them and that includes for the police and for the admin staff as well so when you hear that there's students at the school it kind of suggests that there was some sort of altercation that went on it would surprise me if all of those kids went to the school some of them may have. I'd be surprised if every one of them that was in that altercation was from that school. Right. What do you make of the fact that somebody potentially showed up to their school or somebody else's school with a gun? That's the concern. And I think that's the dilemma for both the school board and for the police. Are we getting to the stage where we want to put uh, metal detectors in front of our yeah. schools? Because how does somebody get into the school with a gun? And most likely, in my opinion, again, I'm going to suggest that the guy with the gun, perhaps wasn't from the school. There was a confrontation in the bathroom. That gun goes off accidentally. This is why it hits the ground, 
and grazes that man's foot. Thankfully, that's all it did. Right, we heard Toronto Police and the TDSB touch on this. It seems like every other week or every week, in some cases, we're talking about violence in schools. Um, what do we do about this? Are we doing enough? And you just talked about the metal detectors. Is there more we can do? Yeah, well, I think it's a problem that lies deeper than a policing issue, that's for sure. And what we need to look at and address, and you talk to any police uh, senior officer that I've been in contact with over the last bunch of years, it's guns. It's the access to guns on the streets. It's the access to guns coming in across our border. That continues to be the problem. And when these kids can get these guns, mm -hmm. they're not trained in how to use them, and they're kids. And things happen, either they'll shoot somebody intentionally or accidentally, but we need to limit their access to the guns, and that starts with closing off the borders better than what we're doing now, in my view. Okay, Steve, thanks so much. You're going to stick around, of course, all afternoon and sure. continue to provide analysis on this shocking story. Steve, thanks so much.